Thank you, Zahn, for hosting this Quick Bytes and for Desktop Health for supporting me. Um, so we're going to be introducing Flexera, and it's for ceramic-like strength in a bottle. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm sure most of you do now, uh, my name is Jessica Burrell. My title, I usually give myself as mom first. I'm a mother of three, and my children have definitely grown up a lot since I first opened my lab. I opened my lab almost 13 years ago when my youngest was a baby. So now my youngest just turned a teenager. I'm now officially the mother of all teens and one adult. So it's definitely a different era for me. Um, I'm also a CDT and a licensed makeup artist. Um, we have a new vision we've been launching this year that you'll hear more about in the future, which is Capture Dental Health and Beauty Center, which is located here in Draper, Utah. It's a new center that not only encompasses dental technology, but whole health and beauty and aesthetics. So we're excited to bring that forward. Um, this product is something near and dear to my heart. I'm very excited to present on today, but its main focus is the evolution of the dental workflow for 3D printed dentures. And really when we look at 3D printing, this to me isn't just dentures. Flexera prints the teeth and the denture base, and I'll go a little bit into more detail on both the different resins and why we use them. But really it's about the evolution of 3D printing. And I've had the opportunity to speak on this subject a couple times already, um, just recently at the Florida Dental Lab Association. We're so excited to be able to get back out and hold conferences live. But I'm very excited for where 3D printing has evolved to. So as a lab owner, I've had just a small desktop printer for quite a while and was slightly disappointed with the results. And so we started to outsource to larger printing companies that had the large printing machines that could handle um, some of the detail accuracy that we needed in the laboratory. And I've been waiting for this 3D printing system and 3D technology in general to advance to the point where I'm ready to invest into it as a small laboratory. So my laboratory, I would say a small to medium size. We average about eight to 10 on our team. And we've, like I said, we've really been waiting for the 3D resins one and printable systems to evolve to where it's something that we can afford and place into our office. So with this new material, Flexera, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this material. This is a product from Desktop Health. And if you're not familiar with Desktop Health, Envision Tech was the original company. Envision Tech One is my printing system that we'll talk about later on. Flexera is their trademark product that was just released to the market, I believe this summer in June. So it may or may not be available in all colors, but be prepared, it's on the market and it's coming. So there's one specific product called Flexera Smile, and we'll get into some of the science of the material today, why I use this material, and how it compares to other products on the market. Flexera Smile is a printable resin that you can use for your teeth, and we like to use this for our denture teeth. I originally started using this product for printed temporaries, and temporaries is what we really found you know, we mill temporaries a lot, but we really wanted to be able to have the option to print them as well. Most of you that mill know that milling's very hard on the milling machine, and PMMA can break down, it can cost a lot of money in burrs, and sometimes be unpredictable depending on the milling machine you're using. So to have the option to print temporaries for me is huge, but strength is where we were lacking in the past. And I used other products like Nextent and it was okay. It worked out pretty well. Um, but now with Flexera Smile, you'll see the studies here sh soon on how it compares to Nextent. So we've been able to print even full arch temporaries. There is a gradient translucency that you'll see dependent on thickness and it's a very beautiful product. So I've been very happy with the results so far. Um, I have not had a single one break. And like I said, we have been using these on full mouth rehabs. And I've even tested it on a client of mine on her individual teeth. And the printed material she loved the best, the results were really nice for printed temporaries. We also use this material for printed denture teeth. And this is something we weren't utilizing in the beginning. We were using the prefabricated denture teeth. And I can go through some pros and cons in this slide today of why you'd use the printed teeth versus the prefab teeth. 
And one of the biggest reasons we found is the prefab teeth are beautiful. Uh, we were using Dents by Serona's uh, product. I believe it's their 3D portrait. And it's nice because they have that gradient translucency, but we found sometimes there's problems in the process of taking those denture teeth and embedding it into the base. And so there, it's very technique sensitive when you're using the prefab teeth. And we found that sometimes we're also really limited with space. And that was our biggest problem. These 3D design teeth, they're awesome because they already have gradient translucency, the shapes there, but sometimes you're limited with occlusal space and you want your base to be a certain thickness. And that became a problem with some of the prefabricated denture teeth because you could not control the thickness. The intaglio or basal surface is either have to move those teeth up so they're too high in occlusion, print your base, glue in your teeth, and then go back in and adjust the occlusion, which we found to be quite challenging at times. We started to get into designing the teeth with the Flexera Smile, and for us that's really been eye-opening. It's opened a lot of opportunities, a lot of doors. Now we have the option to really customize the shape of the teeth so we can play around with the smile and create the individual characteristics specific for that patient. And if we're limited on occlusal space, it's okay. We can shrink those teeth down to get the exact thickness we need for the tooth structure and the base thickness as well. So definitely a lot more freedom in printing your own teeth. And one thing I really like too is the printed teeth and the base are, are similar material. They're similar resins. So the bonding between the two materials is perfect. So we've had less problems with the teeth coming apart from the base than we do from the prefabricated denture teeth. We've really had to work to refine that process. And we will definitely have some videos later on coming out to show you step-by-step -step technique. I'll get into that a little bit on this one, but for the sake of time, I won't be able to go into full detail. So printed denture teeth has definitely been the direction we've been going. We are able to customize a lot more and get a lot more detailed and less restriction. The Flexera base is the denture base material, and this material was really fun for us to experiment the first time. Uh, my team and I, when we printed it out, we were so surprised with how easy this system was. And the material itself, it feels kind of soft and squishy, and it you can feel that flex to it. So we printed out the base, you know, put it through the alcohol bath, put it through the curing unit, and most of my team still felt like, well, is it really cured all the way? Because it still felt kind of soft and pliable. But if you try to squeeze it and bend it, it doesn't move, but it still feels like it has a soft consistency to it. So it really is a flexible feel to it. And that's why, hence the name Flexera. It's been a really nice product. And so far, our patient review has been the same thing, that they like the feel of it. And the fit from print uh, from design to print to in the patient's mouth has been incredible, especially compared to our traditional dentures. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the science of the material. I am a big science person. I love to do research on any product I use. And I do not switch products easily. Those of you that know me, um, I do spend a lot of time in researching any product that I use and I take pride in what I place in our patient's mouth. Uh, one of the things that you can understand about this material or this Flexera material is it has this long chain chemistry. So it allows the flex in the material. And when we get into some of the specs on this material, you'll see how it compares and it really blows a lot of other competitors out of the market. So for me, it's, it's a very exciting time in where we are going with 3D printing. And those of you that are still not on board with 3D printing, I really encourage you to look into desktop health system, look into their resins. I, I feel like now is definitely the time where it's affordable for small to mid-sized labs and even large size labs are now jumping on the bandwagon with desktop health. And you'll see it's we have quality plus predictability now and we don't compromise on aesthetics. So this is a picture taken from my actual printer. This was one of our first dentures that we printed. We were so excited to document the process. Um, there's multiple ways you can put these supports on there, and we can talk about that more in instructional videos. But once we print these, I know there was some questions on how long it takes to print these. It depends on the angle you position them and how many you're printing. 
but on average it's about two to two and a half hours for us to print a denture. Um, you can change the angle of them. I don't recommend it. If you tip them at too uh, low of an angle, you can get a misprint. So we found that out from research. Um, so when we look at how Flexera really compares to what's on the market, I know some of you are probably like me, saying, you know, really another new product. And we, we really want to make sure when we buy into new products or we jump into a new system that the research is there, at least from my standpoint. I want to make sure this product has already been tested and researched before I get it into my hands and I start testing it with my patients. So when we look at this material, this is for the Flexera base, you'll see how it compares. If you go down to the bottom chart, you can see how it compares to some of the other products. So the eDenture Pro, the eDenture Pro is the Flexera material. Then you have some of the other competitors on the market in such, such as carbon. Um, I was a big fan of carbon, but it's, it was tough to decide how I can afford that in a small laboratory. So one thing I want you to notice in the middle here, when this material is dry, look at this strength. You can see the ultimate strength of 37.4 megapascals. And then look at it after it's been immersed into water for two days. The strength, the megapascal strength actually increases which is pretty awesome because we are putting this in a salivated environment. And most items or most materials in a salivate, salivated environment tend to break down or weaken, where this material, material, the Flexera material, actually increases in strength, that flexual strength. Um, when you look at the ultimate flexual strength, it's 90 megapascals, where after being immersed in water for two days, it's 81. And when you look at the comparison, how does this compare to the lucid, sorry, the lucido material, such as carbon that we've been using with carbon, you can see the overall flexural strength is 68 with carbon, where this material consistently is between 90 to 81 megapascals. So in my opinion, they're all pretty good products, but what um, really is the selling point And for me on this is that it is quite a bit stronger and in that wet environment it's elevated and so it is a very strong material and it's nice to see that the studies have been performed to test it and test longevity and I was very hesitant like I said with digital dentures we currently use the IVO based system right now and switching over to digital dentures I'll go through that process in a little bit has been very very easy so when we compare the Flexera Smile, this is the teeth material, you can also look at the same megapascal strengths. Uh, we've got the ultimate strength is 67.5 megapascals. After it's been in water, it's 68. So strength increases in a salivated environment, which is huge for me. Dentures come in and out, so that strength can kind of flex or vary depending on the, the salivated or dry environment. Um, but the temporaries, the teeth, when we place temporaries, are constantly exposed to that salivated environment. So it's important for me to know the strength. Now you may say 68 megapascals, that's not as strong because zirconia is 1,000 megapascals. This is temporary material. And so whenever I look at temporaries, either milled or traditional um, temporary resin that we use in office in the clinic, I'm not necessarily looking at megapascal or flexual strength. What I'm looking at is occlusion. So remember, balance occlusion when you're working with temporaries. I like to say make sure your restorations dance and have the doctor be considerate and careful with occlusion as well. If occlusion is dialed in, this material, I like that it's a little bit softer because it wears very naturally with a natural teeth or when opposing itself. So the flexual strength is there. Um, 136 is what our MPA is versus 125 in a salivated environment. And you can see how it compares to some others on the market, some as low as 50 or less than. So it's been a very, very exciting material to come to the market. Um, and I can, I can vouch for it, like I said, testing this material for ourselves. Um, I am using this more on my full mouth cases now. I notice a lot of my clients just struggle to get nice looking temporaries. So if I can provide a printed temporary with my diagnostic wax up, their process is really simple to place temps. The patient satisfaction goes up and it's a lot easier for them. Everyone wins in the end. So 
Um, one thing that's fascinating about this product, Flexera, is when you look at the moisture resistant resistance, this material actually stains less. It's two times more resistant to moisture. So that's one thing I was concerned about is how much porosity do we have, how much plaque is going to adhere to this, um, and how much staining are we going to see. And I can tell you now that we've been doing these cases for a few months, we have seen a few come back. Our main um, problem we had with some of them coming back was using the prefabricated denture teeth. And when we use the prefabricated denture teeth, some of those popped out. So we've refined that process. And that's something that um, I really feel that the printed teeth, they, they just um, excel in that area. The printed teeth are holding up really well. But we've noticed there's really little to no plaque buildup on this. You do need to be careful not to get any bubbles. So as you're manufacturing these, look for bubbles or air pockets that plaque and bacteria can get trapped. And that's going to be your weak point. So as long as you maintain that, keep it nicely polished, um, there was little to any uh, staining and plaque um, added to these dentures that had been in the mouth for several months. So when you look at some of this water absorption, look at how it compares to other materials on the market, even Nextent. Nextent was really one of the strong competitors in the market. And you can see that Flexera completely closed Nextent away. So this has been a really exciting product to hit the market. Um, when we look at how Flexera can improve our digital workflow, um, I was really nervous implementing a new product. And like I said, I'm not the first one to jump on the bandwagon when a new product comes out. I really like to test and research. Sometimes I'll allow other labs to test and research and we can learn from their, their research, we like to say, instead of failures. Um, one thing I like, though, is the confidence in my manufacturers that they've done some of the research before it's released to the market. Um, when we launched our printing system a few years ago, we found that it really wasn't a simplified process. And just to get accurate prints with our other printing system, just a small, it was a sprint rate, we really had to dive into the digital software and calibrate it and calibrate it and calibrate it. And anytime you switched resins, you had to calibrate again. And I'm pretty sure their technical support got pretty annoyed with us because we were constantly calling and had to actually dive into the coding into the software to get the results we wanted. And even then, it was still pretty inconsistent. So in my opinion, uh, Carbons really led the market with digital dentures. And I was really hesitant to get into that arena unless I went the Carbon route. So once I did a lot of research, I lectured last year in Chicago at the Chicago Midwinter right before COVID. I dived into all the different printing systems that were available on the market and found that that oxygen inhibition layer was really what allowed carbon to thrive and be as successful with their precision. And that it was the same type of technology that we have in desktop health in the Envision Tech One. So for me, that was like gold. I called Envision Tech One and I let them know I'm going to be speaking to you very soon. And as we were getting ready to purchase all of our new equipment for our new center, I started to look at how can we simplify our workflow and how can we evolve and advance with 3D printing. And I reached out to Envision Tech One to see what their system really was and if that air inhibition layer was the same and asked a few questions and shortly after purchased their entire system. So we're gonna go through their system. Um, really what we're working on and my goal and what I encourage you when we look at digital, digital is meant to simplify. It's meant to simplify what we do by hand, not compromise on aesthetics, but to simplify the process. So we're simplifying without compromising beauty. And that's really key to me as I move forward with digital technology. So I like to say that technicians, we overcomplicate things. And if we're not careful, it can end up into this huge mess. Um, my slides are not working. Is that playing on your end? Let's see, let's try this again. There we go. So this is what it can easily end up like when we're playing around with products when we're not familiar with them. But we also overcomplicate it. And those of you that have worked with me in porcelain, you know my process has really changed over the last few years to simplify it. This is what 3D printing should do. It should simplify our approach. So as we look at the system here that Desktop Health provides, 
they really, it couldn't be any easier than this. And I can tell you from experience, we've had a lot of new equipment. We have all digital software from 3Shape to ExoCAD to InLab. And part of our new center is a research center. So we research and test not only the ExoCAD and the different design software, but different materials and equipments and resins. So when we implement new systems, we know how complicated some of them can be to add into our facility. So with the Envision Tech One, I figured it was going to take a little while to tweak and refine, or, or tweak and refine, as that had been my experience with our previous printer. Our previous printer to me was, was a nightmare. It was far from simplified. So as we jumped into the Envision Tech One, I bought the entire system that you see here in front of you. I bought the Envision, the Envision One, and I bought their cleaning unit. So they have their alcohol bath cleaning unit. I bought their light curing unit. And I bought one other one that you do not see here called their auto flash curing unit. And it was a very easy process that we technical support got on the phone with us. They helped us install the printer. They did a test run with us. They checked calibration. We didn't even have to calibrate anything. I was surprised. I was used to like 42 calibrations. So I thought, this that's it? Are you sure it's really calibrated? We don't need to go through any other process. And he's like, nope, you're good to print. So we are currently using 3Shape. We also have ExoCAD set up. And I know with InLab, the, the main problem we had with InLab is you could only do full dentures. You have to have mandibular and maxillary opposing dentures. You can't just do one arch which was a challenge for us. So we've been using 3Shape at the moment and getting ready to install our new ExoCAD software as well. So 3Shape works well. We've been using this material for flippers and surprisingly, you can get a slightly flexible flipper, which is awesome. And this process is very fast. When you're printing flippers, it does not take nearly as long. I would say 30 to 45 minutes to print a flipper. Teeth can take as little as 15 to 25 minutes to print teeth because they're very small. So for us to make a flipper, it's been a very quick process. Um, I just have to plug in my, my computer screen. There we go. I thought I had that plugged in. Um, so one thing I wanted to go back into was the curing units. Not all curing units are alike. And when we first tested um, a surgical guide material by Keystone Industry, we printed this material on multiple printers and cured it in multiple curing units. And we found that's where the discrepancies are, is the curing unit. So you can use three shape software. You can use a couple different software platforms. ExoCAD I know works really great. InLab works great, but has a couple limitations. Uh, the printer accuracy is critical and it's that error inhibition layer. And in my opinion, Envision One and Carbon are the only two leaders in the market right now that can print that kind of accuracy. Carbon just has a bigger price tag. Envision One for me has a complete system. So with the two different curing units, you'll notice on the far right, that curing unit I use mainly for models. The auto flash has really been the key to getting strength in dentures and night guards. And I don't know how many of you have printed night guards, but for those of you that have, um, our experience was not very positive in the beginning. We printed several night guards only to have them within one month to three months come back with failure. So we found that it was more the curing process, not necessarily the resin, but the curing process was not creating the proper strength. So note, not all curing units are the same. Some can cause the material to become brittle. Some can cause it to be over cured and the color can almost burn or change. Some can be undercured, allowing the material to be too flexible. So the auto flash is a different curing system that's meant to increase strength. And that's been key to us. So we use the auto flash for curing all of our denture bases and all of our night guards. And so far we have had no problems with our bases breaking and we've started printing all night guards again and it's been working really well so far. So this for me is a very streamlined approach. We've got our digital software. Like I said, multiple systems or software platforms are compatible with Envision One. I've got my Envision One printer, and then I've got my alcohol bath and my different curing units. So there is a very strict process that you need to follow when curing. You need to be careful from how long you're soaking it in the alcohol bath to letting that alcohol fully evaporate and dry 
or even putting that in a warming oven for a little bit to allow that alcohol to evaporate before fully curing. So that's something that I know we didn't, we weren't aware of was that you need to let that alcohol evaporate before going through the curing process. And like I said, we'll have more videos coming out here on the future that have step-by-step -step tutorials. So, you know, like I said, as technology advances, um, and our main goal is first of all to simplify, simplify without compromising. But also, as a small and mid-sized lab, we don't want to overextend ourselves financially. And this is something I really want to caution a lot of you on. Does printing make sense for you? What are you going to be printing? Are you in the denture world? Are you going to be printing temporaries? Could you benefit from printing flippers and night guards um, and also your models? As these materials advance and the printers become more accurate, now it's easier for small labs to say, yes, I can afford this because I can maximize what I can print. I can print more materials and have more option with um, increased accuracy. But be careful not to overextend yourself financially. And I know that was our biggest problem when we looked at things a year ago or even two years ago. When we seen the price of some of these 3D printing systems that were on the market, this was my response. It was like, yes, that's awesome. I would love to have that system, but there is no way I can justify $50,000 a year on a lease to bring this into my laboratory. And I've talked with large laboratories worldwide, doing the math and the numbers breakdown to see where their break-even point is. And these machines need to run day and night to break even. So as a small lab, be mindful not to overextend yourself financially. So when I called Desktop Health, and I, I was so scared when they gave me the pricing at first, I was waiting for this giant number. Yes, it's more than the small desktop printers, but the number they give you, and I'm sure you'll call when you find out, for the complete system, I bought the entire system. It's something I own and much less than what it costs for such a system such as Carbon on a one-year lease. So finding out their price to me was a huge difference and a huge celebration and that's still something we are celebrating in our lab. It has definitely brought a lot of excitement and energy into my team and into our clients as well. So one other thing I really love about this product that I wanted to share with you is the different color options. And those of you that know me, I'm very big into color. I want to make sure that my color, I have options to customize. And with this product, look at all the different color options we have. We have several different base colors and several different tooth colors. And I've been working with our developers of their products. You can mix and match some of these resins when bonding the teeth in. So we now have the ability to customize the color directly with the resin itself which to me is incredible because we're not compromising or weakening the material by adding different colors to it. So with this different, this, this 3D printed system, one, we've achieved a simplified workflow, which to me is key, especially as a business owner, I don't wanna overcomplicate what we're doing. I've enhanced the patient's fit um, and patients love the feel of this material. It's a repeatable process, which is like therapy for us when something breaks and you can reproduce it. And the results have been extremely predictable. So not saying that from a salesman or a sales standpoint at all, but from a lab and a technician standpoint, I've been very happy with the results and the precision, the precision from three shape software all the way through the Envision One printer to the resin to the fit in the patient's mouth. Um, it's been a very easy system to use and it's an affordable system. So, you know, one thing I really wanted to focus on too with Desktop Health, who has taken over Envision One, is innovation. I am an innovator, and that's what I focused really hard in my career on, to um, think outside the box, to allow ourselves to dream, to imagine, to create, and help lead the industry as innovators. Desktop Health sh shares this same vision. Um, with innovation comes a need to simplify. So I'd like to challenge you to look around you and realize there is still a need to simplify. There is still a need to discover processes, to simplify processes. Um, there's still a need for us to say, no, we will not compromise on aesthetics. Digital should never compromise. Um, and we also um, 
we can simplify this together. This is something that we have all of these technicians, those of you that are listening today and that will listen in the future, we have all of our heads together that can work together to simplify these processes and evolve and innovate 3D printing. Um, we all have the same amount of time. We know that lab technicians can work way too much. So I'd really like to challenge you to choose to make time for the things you love. I love dental technology, but if we're not careful with our processes, we tend to work too much and can burn out pretty fast. Um, you know, as we really work to manage our time, we need to focus on spending time with those that we love in our life too before time is gone. So as I opened my lab, like I said, almost 13 years ago, I sat down with a lot of lab owners that were ready to retire, and so some almost ready to retire and in the process of retiring. And all of them said one thing, that they wish they would have spent less time in the lab and more time on the people they love. So in honor of all those who have retired or looking to retire and those that have retired, and have already passed on, I feel it is our legacy to really be innovators. And so that we can say at the end of our career that we did not, we did not overwork. We did not work it all away. We will not work it all away. And with our technology today and the innovation that we have available, we can say that we loved and we played. This is definitely my new playground. I hope that um, you'll take time to look at your options in 3D printing as well and realize it is such an exciting time. Thank you, Jessica. We do have a couple of questions. And one of them is they're having trouble with the dentures turning sort of orange after curing. Have you had this issue and do you have a solution? So I would say if they're having issues with the material turning too orange, they're definitely using the wrong curing unit. So your curing unit is too hot. If it goes more of an amber color, then definitely you have to have the heat and evaluate your curing unit. Most likely it's not the correct system. So these curing units use very little heat. We do have a video playing. Do you have the... Um... There we go. Okay, I think we have a few more questions, right? Yes. So the other question that we had was on uh, what machine is compatible with this specific resin? Is it compatible with all printers or is it a closed system? So I would reach out to Desktop Health and see what other printing systems they've test their product with. I know a lot of companies are trying to work with other printing systems. For us, it was Envision one hands down because the printing system is not the same specs as other printers. And that's one thing you need to know. If you want to print night guards and dentures and have that accuracy, you have to have that oxygen inhibition layer that's similar to carbon and desktop health, the Envision one. Uh, you will not find that same type of strength on some of these other printers. So I'm just gonna caution you, if you're trying to use a different printing system, you will have discrepancies in the strength and you could compromise the strength based off of the printing component alone. So look at your printer. Um, Envision One's the only printer I would use for this, yeah. And how long does it take to print a denture base? So denture base is between two, two and a half hours. We've tried to cheat it, like I said, and, and lay the denture down a little bit. And sometimes we've had some issues with misprints. So for us, we try to combine all of our dentures and print them all together at once. And even in a large batch, it's about two to, I think the max we've ever had was two hours and 45 minutes, which for us, if we're managing our time right, that's no problem because we're working on other designs or other things while it's printing. And the next question is, can you use Flexera to make temporary crowns? Yes, so absolutely. That's what I started using this material for in the beginning was for temporaries. And this has been something really exciting for us. Like I said, we're using it on full mouth temporary cases right now. I'm still performing studies to see how long that they hold up. We've had some in the mouth. I've actually got one that's been in the mouth for over three months as we're trying to calibrate a patient's bite and it's a full mouth. So 
um, definitely, we haven't had any problems, knock on wood, with it breaking. And the patient that we've had a full arch in the mouth for a few months, he's broke through zirconia and he's had a pretty aggressive bite. So we wanted to slow down and keep him in temporaries while we equi equilibrated his bite. So it definitely holds up well. Um, yeah, so far we're really excited about the options for temporary. Any technique for adding the traditional vein fiber characterization to Flexera in, in 3D printed dentures? You know, I know they've got a couple new colors that they've come out with. So that's gonna be part of our study. We're still waiting on getting the full color system, but I know from the different colors we have right now, that's what we've learned and talking to their main developer of their product also. When I'm adding the teeth to the base, I can use the resin itself to customize and paint different color. So right now we've been using the base material in combination with the tooth resin to kind of customize and give characterization to the denture. And we've been really happy with the results. Um, another study we've been doing is when you attach the teeth to the base is adding a little bit of composite stain in between them and then applying resin over the top and doing your final cure. And so far that's holding up really well too. Okay, the next is can you refine or reline this denture? Yes, you can reline it just like a traditional denture, so that's no problem. Um, but also, in my opinion, you can also reprint. They could take a new impression and you can easily take the old file and reprint a new one. So you can reline these, you can treat these just like a traditional denture, um, but it's also really easy to reprint a new one if you need to change something. And we have another, how can you bond the teeth to the denture? So that we could get lost on that subject, but just to be quick for the sake of time, if they're existing or prefabricated teeth, like the, the 3D teeth from Dentsply, um, we've found all kinds of problems with those breaking away from the base. So lately we've been sandblasting them and creating retention holes in them and then applying them to the base. We found the posterior teeth hold really well, but the anterior teeth were sometimes not fully curing. The resin wasn't curing all the way underneath them. And so um, use a handheld curing unit when applying those teeth. I do like a little bit of texture to them and then those retention holes. But also when you glue the teeth to the base, be careful, don't use the pink resin to glue them together. Use the tooth resin. If not, you'll end up with the teeth, they'll have a slight pinkish hue inside. So use the tooth resin when you're adding those together. And use a handheld curing unit underneath the surface to really help the glue underneath the denture tooth to set up. If you're gluing um, the resin teeth to the resin base, that's no problem. Yeah, they bond really easy. Another question is, is how can they get instructions for use, including validated workflows? So I know Flexera Desktop Health has just released some instructions for use. I was waiting for them eagerly, eagerly too. So they do have those out and available. You can contact them directly and we're getting ready to launch their new education platform that will have a lot of step-by-step -step training videos. So there's a lot of great information and step-by-step -step tutorials that are getting ready to come out. Another question is, is how can we fix the denture if it breaks? So it depends on where it breaks. The main area we've seen breakage is just around the 3D teeth, the prefabricated denture teeth. So that's why we've really strayed away from them now and are going to the printed resin teeth. Printed resin teeth, we've had no breaking. Um, we've had no problem with them. So the denture itself, if you're having breaking, is either A, are you curing it in the right curing unit? And like I said, I don't stray away from desktop system because I know it's been tested and refined. The auto flash curing unit enhances strength. So that's another option. You can use that auto flash on other systems I know, but it helps increase the strength throughout the curing process. Um, you can glue it back together with the resin. So if we have a tooth breakout, it's really easy to repair. You just take a little bit of the resin, put the tooth back in and cure it again. I do put it back in the auto flash, but I use that handheld curing light just to make sure the resin's fully hardened before I put it into that auto flash curing unit. So it's very easy to cure. Just pay attention, are you using tooth resin or the gingiva base resin? And be aware of the color, that you can change the color of the tooth if you're using the gingiva base. 